start with L for lymphoma. Now, lymphomas may not be terribly common. Many of these things are not terribly common in kids, but you may know that lymphoblastic leukemia lymphoma, particularly B cell, is quite common. It's, it's the most common neoplastic diagnosis you're going to see in kids. And just because it's such a common malignancy, even though it doesn't typically present as a lymphoma, a lot of the times when you're looking at a tumor, you have to be cognizant of this and make sure that what you're looking at is not a lymphoma. Uh, B cells are definitely much more common than T cells, but both happen. And of course, in addition to lymphoblastic, you're also going to see things like Burkitt lymphoma that's going to present as a solid tumor, uh, a lot of times associated with the terminal ileum. And this is about 40% of all childhood lymphomas. Now, if somebody was going to ask you quiz questions about this, you'd want to know about things like endemic and sporadic, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's talk a little bit more about lymphoblastic lymphoma. So this is something you could see in any child or adolescent at any age. It's about 90% of leukemias, and the white counts in these patients are going to be quite variable. You will have patients that have really, really high white counts. You'll have patients that have really low white counts because their marrow is packed full of malignant cells, and they're just not having a lot of uh, white cells get into circulation. This is another age and location piece. If you see an anterior mediastinal mass in a very young child, you might want to think about T lymphoblastic lymphoma. And a touch prep, we'll, still, we'll talk about that in a second. A touch prep is going to be really helpful in that. So your differential, obviously, the different types of uh, lymphomas, but also you want to be mindful of Ewing sarcoma, and we'll talk about why that is in just a moment as well. So for immunohistochemical stains, lymphoblastic lymphomas are going to, they're named because they are like lymphoblasts. They are going to have immature phenotypes similar to lymphoblasts. They're going to be CD20 and CD19 positive generally. They may or may not have CD10. But the things that are really going to help you identify them as immature are going to be TDT and CD34. And you can get either of those markers by either flow cytometry or immunist chemistry. Now, CD99 is the one that's important to know about. And this is why Ewing sarcoma is on the list of my differential. Immunoblasts and lymphoblastic lymphoma are going to be CD99 positive. So you can't just think of Ewing sarcoma based on that uh, immunostain. You know, it's said to stain 99 things, and lymphoblastic lymphoma is one of them. And to differentiate it from other lymphomas, uh, it's going to be negative for T cell markers. If it's B, if it's B, it's T, it's going to be negative for B cell markers. And if it's uh, negative, it's going to be negative. The lymphoblastic lymphomas are both going to be negative for surface immunoglobulins, and, uh, which is going to help you distinguish them from Burkitt as well as distinguishing these from myeloid, uh, from AML, because they're going to be negative for myeloid markers. And there's a lot of uh, molecular subtypes. There's a lot of prognostic categories. Uh, we'll talk, I'm not going to talk in great detail about this, because it's, it's a long list, and it's evolving as the field evolves pretty quickly. All right, so let's get, let's get a look at some slides. So here's a touch prep. And this is actually an anterior mediastinal mass in a young child. And I want to point out all the things in this picture that help you know that this is a lymphoma. First of all, you'll see that all these sheets, all these cells came off in a nice sheet. It's a flat monolayer. Imagine that you opened a bag of marbles on a table and gave them space to spread out. That's what you're seeing here. These cells have spread out across the slide. They're not piled up on each other. They're not stuck to each other. They're separated from each other. So they, that lack of cohesion is characteristic of lymphomas, and hopefully the fact that you can see that lack of cohesion by not seeing big three-dimensional clusters will help you think about lymphoma when you see a touch prep like this. Now, as you get to higher power on this too, the other thing you'll see is look at all these things in the background, all these little cell fragments. So you can you see the cells themselves are really, really high nucleus to cytoplasm ratio, very scant, very pale, uh, very scant, very blue cytoplasm on this quick stain touch prep. But do you see all these little fragments in the background? And I know folks are a few seconds behind me on the live stream, so feel free to drop an answer in the in the uh, comments, but I, I may not see it right away. But do you know what these things are? So they're little tiny fragments, and they're fragments of cytoplasm. They're fragments of cytoplasm that break off of these lymphoid cells, of any lymphoid cell in a touch prep. These are called lymphoglandular bodies. So this is a great clue that you're looking at a lymphoma. You see something that looks discohesive because it's not making three-dimensional clusters and it's dropping lymphoglandular bodies in the background, that's probably a lymphoma. Now, when you get your H&E section, there's several things here that are going to be really helpful, really characteristic of lymphomas. Because, again, as these cells do not have cohesion to each other, you're going to see these big artifactual spaces between the, the, sheet, 
the sheet of cells. So you see these cracking artifacts. You're also going to see things like crush artifact because these cells are pretty fragile. So you see a lot of crush artifact here as well. And this is actually a really good look too at, you can see all the white space around all these cells. Because they're not cohesive to each other, one of the artifacts that happens during formal fixation is they're going to shrink. They're going to shrink away from each other and it's going to give you that artifactual white space. And the other thing you're going to see in lymphomas that you're not going to see in a lot of other things is this single file infiltration through collagen, nerves, any structure, where you see single rows of cells between these collagen bundles. Now, if you're doing adult pathology, you might think of um, lobular breast carcinoma, but we know this isn't a carcinoma from our touch prep, so on our sections, we see this, we think about lympho lymphoma. And again, here it is high power. These are immature cells, so you see their chromatin is mostly pretty smooth. Single, maybe two, occasionally three nucleoli, but pretty immature looking chromatin and incredibly scant cytoplasm. And again, you can see that lack of cohesion is evidenced by the fact that you have these artifactual clefts that go all the way around many of these cells. All right, so now let's talk about Burkitt lymphoma. The characteristic things that you're going to see that are going to make you think about Burkitt lymphoma are cytoplasmic vacuoles, that starry sky of tangible body macrophages, and you're going to want to be able to differentiate this from the other lymphomas like we talked about. And again, as I said, the lymphoblastic lymphomas are immature. Burkitt is just the opposite. It is mature. It is the phenotype of a mature, mature germinal center B cell. So it's going to be positive for CD20, CD19, CD10, and usually they're positive for BCL6. Uh, and the characteristic thing is that their KI67, the MIB1 in these, is going to be very, very high. By flow cytometry, they're also going to be positive for surface immunoglobulin and negative for those markers of immaturity. There's going to be three translocations that are associated with Burkitt, and they're all associated with the MIC oncogene on chromosome 8. And if you're ever quizzed about the difference between endemic and sporadic Burkitt lymphoma, endemic lymphomas, endemic Burkitt lymphoma is the generally EBV positive type that's happening in the jawbones and face of children. Um, and there's some particular geographic associations with that. Most of what we see in North America is sporadic cases uh, where you're going to have an abdominal mass, a lot of times associated with a terminal ileum. There's going to be a some, somewhat of a predominance for males and Caucasians, and still 20 to 30 percent of these are going to be EPV positive, but it's certainly less than the endemic form. So if anyone's asking you a question about this uh, and the likelihood of EBV positivity, more likely the endemic form is positive. So here's a cytospin. This is actually a CSF that's involved by a Burkitt lymphoma. And this is a really nicely stained slide. So that's why I'm showing it for the cytoplasmic vacuoles. You, and you may know this is a cytospin because you can see the nucleus is kind of deformed. That's because of the artifact of the cytospin preparation. But this is a really good look at the lipid droplets that you're going to see in the cytoplasm of Burkitt lymphoma. And it, here's an H and E stain. You'll know you're going to figure out very quickly, I really like touch preps. I really like to be able to get to the cytology of these tumors really quickly when I'm triaging them because if I think something's a lymphoma, that's going to help me know to send flow cytometry. So here's an H and E stain diff quick, and you can see this really highlights the chromatin. And you can see this chromatin is, instead of being more smooth and single, or you know, two or maybe three chromatin centers, some of these could pass for chocolate chip cookies, right? They're really kind of coarse chromatin. That's more characteristic of a mature lymphocyte. So again, features of a mature B cell. And here's the starry sky. So the low power, what you're seeing, in addition to things like that cracking artifact that we talked about in lymphomas, you're seeing what looks like at low power, these you know, stars in a dark background, these holes. And what these holes are are tangible body macrophages. Tangible body macrophages, now this is important, tangible body macrophages can show up in any lymphoma. Any lymphoma that has a high proliferative rate is going to attract tangible body macrophages to pick up cellular debris. And so that's exactly what you're seeing here. This very highly proliferative lymphoma has attracted these tangible body macrophages. And because their cytoplasm is pale, they look like stars in the sky at low power. And they're just eating up the dying neat uh, neoplastic cells as they go. So here's again the cytology at high power on the H and E stain section. Again, you see that artifactual cleft that's almost all the way around many of these cells because they're lymphoma cells. They're not cohesive to each other. They're going to separate from one another. And you can see that chromatin again is quite coarse. Compare that with what we looked at a few slides ago for a B lymphoblastic lymphoma or a T lymphoblastic lymphoma that had the more smooth chromatin. This is a much more coarse chromatin. And here's the MIB1. KI67, it's staining almost every single nucleus of the tumor. 
The few nuclei that are here that are negative are endothelial nuclei. So the highlights I want to talk about for lymphoma. Lymphoblastic lymphomas are the most common neoplasm in childhood, so you will, see, you will encounter them as a lymphoma in pediatric practice. They're going to have an immature phenotype. Knowing something about the white count, looking at the peripheral smear is going to be helpful. And again, if you see something in the anterior mediastinum of a child, think about T lymphoblastic lymphoma. We talked about Bur Burkitt having a germinal center phenotype with a very high proliferative rate. Now again, that, that high proliferative rate is what's driving the presence of those tingible body macrophages. So even in lymphoblastic lymphoma, if you have a high proliferative rate, you might see those tingible body macrophages. But it's much more common in Burkitt lymphoma. And know that the endemic form is more often associated with EBV.